has to do with Comcast versus Byron Allen. Um, I think this story kind of disappeared in the news a little bit um, because I had, there was vague notions of it a little while back and then it just kind of disappeared, right? But, but it reappeared last week because the Supreme Court did make a decision um, that uh, Comcast won against this uh, lawsuit that Byron Allen had put out against him over racial discrimination. Um, now, in the lower courts, uh, they did win. He, he, he won. Um, uh, well, he won against Charter, I believe, because Charter, Charter also had the same problem as Comcast did. And he won in the lower co courts against Charter, uh, but he did not win against uh, Comcast. And the Charter decided to take it up to the, to the higher courts um, and uh, I think they lost that again, but then same thing happened here is Byron Allen decided that, well, if Charter's going to do this against me in the higher courts, I might as well do the same thing um, against Comcast, uh, and that's what he did. And the, what he based it off of was um, the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1866. And uh, and he said that uh, that's you know th there were contractual problems with with how Comcast was um, kind of implementing their standards for his channels to be included on their network, um, and he has like Comedy TV, Justice TV, um, and it's a black owned business, so you know that's the the programming has that urban element to it, or or uh, some urban element to it. Um, so uh, the civil so he he put he pushed the discrimination lawsuit um, under the Civil Rights Act of 1866 uh, with the but for standard. So let's start with the Civil Rights Act of 1866. What what does that say, right? So the Civil Rights Act of 1866 says, I hope you guys can see this, um, is all persons with the jurisdiction of the United States shall have the same right in every state and territory to make and enforce contracts to sue be parties, give evidence, and to the full and equal benefit of law and proceeding for the security of persons and properties as is enjoyed by white citizens and shall be subject to like punishments, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind and to no other. Um, interesting that it, they, they have to qualify that um, the, the white citizens part uh, of of the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1866, there, and this is what this is what uh, Byron Allen is 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 saying that uh, Comcast violated, right, um, by by uh, evoking this but for standard, implying that the deal would have gone through had it not been a black owned business. Um, you know, the deal would have gone through if not for the reasons of race or skin color, and that's why it didn't go through that they are discriminating against Byron Allen because he uh, is, is a black man. And um, Gorsuch uh, was the final ruling and basically said that, uh, no, Comcast did not racially discriminate against you guys, um, you know, because, because, of, uh, because they didn't. <laughs> and this is, this is very interesting to me because this is once again an example where Comcast, as a corporation, is deemed innocent and we have to prove that they are guilty, right? When it comes to these sort of accusations um, that a corporation is racist or sexist or something like that, they are innocent until proven guilty. So when these accusations are levied towards them, um, it is up to the uh, plaintiff to prove that the defendant um, is guilty of said claims. Uh, so innocent until proven guilty. So we're trying to prove guilt. And corporations always have, always get to the innocent before proven guilty. Whereas we, the people, do not get that. A a average citizens have to prove their innocence rather than the guilt. Right? We, we, we are, you know, like think about it, is when you go to a traffic court over a parking ticket or um, a speeding ticket or whatever the violation is, and you go to this traffic court, the average citizen has to prove that they're innocent 
rather than the courts have to prove their guilt. We are not innocent before proving it. We are already deemed guilty, and now we have to levy against that. But it's the flip side for corporations. The corporations are proven innocent, or, or rather, they, they, are, they are claimed to be innocent and have to be proven that they're guilty. It's a backward system. And I, think, I do think that uh, you know, we've normalized this shit through courtroom dramas because courtroom dramas are always built like this. Courtroom dramas are always just an average person that is accused of a crime and uh, they, are, they are guilty and now they have to prove their innocence, right? That's always how it is. Rather than saying, um, okay, you are innocent and, um, you know, like we, you know, they're always like in jail, <laughs> you know, like how, how do you prove the, how is it the, if, if, if the system is that you're innocent until proven guilty, how is it that the innocent person is always in jail or always, you know, kept in some sort of temporary confinement or something like that, right? Like, that's not proving, that's not claiming that you're innocent. That is 100% claiming that you're guilty, and now you have to prove that you're innocent so you can get out of jail. Uh, and we see so many cases of that, right? Like, especially, like, racial cases that that revolve around... Um, then revolve around this notion that you have to prove you're innocent, but for corporations, it's the the other side has to prove guilt. Like this, it's it's a very it's it's that skewed system. Like we're skewed. That's what it is. That's that's what this is showing. And you know there is proof of um, Comcast being racist because they have a pattern of it. They have a pattern of racial discrimination, and uh, oddly enough, it deals with Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent show power was removed um, from the start, or, or rather, I think Stars was removed from Comcast, which carried power. And, <coughs> excuse me, 50 Cent called out Comcast and the CEO, Brian Roberts. Um, and he basically said, uh, when this happened in 2018, he said, this guy's fucking up power over at Comcast for no reason. Brian Roberts, motherfucker, looks like he's been pushing, push, pushed around his whole life. He needs to chill out, go to a golf course, and sit his ass down somewhere. Right, so they basically claim that uh, Stars is a network that um, helps out urban, uh, urban shows. They put more urban content on there, and uh, Comcast is removing it uh, because they don't like urban content. And... Uh, Comcast's argument is, oh, well, we have standards. We have specific standards that, you know, the, the network didn't meet. We didn't, we didn't want to carry it because of our standards and our rules and so, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, that's what their claim has always been. Even to Byron Allen, that's what their claim has always been, that there's a particular standard that Byron Allen show did not, did not meet, that his network did not meet it or, or what have you. What that, and that was the claim is, but they didn't have to prove like how it didn't meet those standards. That, that's what I never saw any of these stories talking about is, um, is, is all that, right? So, but Comcast was very pleased. They were very pleased at the court's uh, decision at this, right? Uh, they start by saying, we are pleased the Supreme Court unanimously restored certainty on the standard to bring and prove civil rights claim. The well-established framework that has protected civil rights for decades continues. The nation's civil rights laws have not changed with this ruling, and they remain the same as before the case was filed. Now, Byron, Byron Allen, uh, in a statement, said that this is harmful to civil rights of millions of Americans, right? Um, they didn't restore standards to civil rights because this is not the way that the law works. <laughs> I mean, if they were restored, if, 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 if civil rights was really restored, then we would be opening up a bunch of other cases where um, people in the minority community, black, brown, women, LGBTQ, all of these minority identities, all these cases would be coming into question where they had to prove their innocence and not the fact that they were guilty, right? The, they were being accused of something and 
the law state, well, the way that it works is that you're innocent until proven guilty. That's not what happened. All Neil Gorsuch did was say, uh, no, we're not going to look at racial discrimination under the but for standard. We're, we're just not. That's not how this, that's not how this works. Um, and look, at this point, a lot of people have uh, criticized Comcast and the Supreme Court for this decision, and rightfully so, and they should. Because if, if the claim is that but for standard, where was Comcast proof? Why is there no, why is there no story out there um, that is showing the defense that Comcast brought out uh, saying that, that we, we have these you know, pristine standards that we are trying to meet. And here's what they are. And here's how uh, Byron Allen's network does not meet each of these standards. That is not, <laughs> I mean, I, I looked at a bunch of different sources, and, but, but that argument is never shown in any of these media things, which leads me to believe that there wasn't one. That Comcast didn't really have a way to prove that Byron Allen's uh, network does not meet these pristine Comcast standards. Which, by the way, they're, they're, they're standards, if you, you know, kind of look at the way that they run their customer support, it's probably pretty fucking low. And raises a factor for contract negotiations, right? Um, right now, the way that they, they say it is... Uh, Look, everything up till that final signing is totally fine and totally legal and within the rights of the company to do in terms of racial discrimination. Like they don't consider it racial discrimination. Um, if, if you are racist and you practice things that would be considered racist up till that final point of signing, right? And uh, our, our RGB, Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, was the only person that um, said anything in a rebuttal uh, against this ruling. She, she penned a rebuttal, right, why, why she was against it. And, and one of the statements that she made in there was, thus a lender would not violate the law by requiring prospective borrowers to provide one reference letter if they are white and five if they are black. Nor would an employer violate the law by reimbursing expenses for white interviewees but requiring black applicants to pay their own way. So, um, what, what does that mean? That means that whatever barriers corporations and companies and businesses and institutions want to put up up till that final point of agreement, they can do that, um, right? And, and we, I, mean, I mean, we see this shit everywhere. This is an argument that I've had with a bunch of people about, like, oh, is Trump racist? Is he really racist or does he just kind of care about money and he sees that... Um, you know, supporting black institutions and blah, 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 blah. And black people is not particularly profitable for him. Um, and he doesn't, so he doesn't do or say anything. But there are practices where, you know, he, his, his apartment complexes and his condos and stuff, like black people would come in and they would look around and they wouldn't turn them away at the door, but they would make a little mark to say that, well, we're not going to consider these people's applications. And then they just never would. They would never consider their applications, right? So... Up till that point of signing a contract, you can't claim that there is any sort of racial discrimination or racial bias based on what they do. Like, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg pointed out, if, if uh, an interviewee says, well, you're white and you probably had to take a bus to get down here. This is how you subvert class problems, by the way, right? Like most of this is, m most arguments really boil down to, to to class and how, how class is affected by all of this. Um, and you can twist it. You can add a little el an extra element to make it racist like this, right? So like the, the second point of this where she says that um, interviewees could be uh, reimbursed, but, but black applicants would have to pay their own way. So let's say that you are a poor white person that lives further outside of town and you get an interview and you take a bus. Well, they'll go, how much did you, how much was it for the, for the bus? And they go, oh, well, it was, you know, 275 round trip. Well, they'll go, here's a five. 
be on your way? Did you have lunch today? You know, did you have to buy lunch outside? Blah, 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 blah. And they go, well, here's $20 reimbursed, be on your way. We'll see if we hire you or not. But a black applicant, does, they don't have to do that. And now we've added a racial element to the class struggle, uh, which is part of the way that they keep the classes divided, right? Like poor white people and poor black people essentially struggle through the same sort of financial burdens where they might not be able to afford rent. And now you've added an extra element to it where you've alleviated the white person's, the poor white person's problems, but not the poor, the white, poor black person's problems. And then now you can use that same thing to say, well, the poor white person wouldn't really have a problem to begin with if it wasn't for these poor black people. And now you're creating a, 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 a class warfare using race as a, a igniting force behind it, right? So all of that is fine according to this, right, which is bullshit, which is crazy. Uh, all of that is fine. Um, I, I, where the problem would have come in is when the, when the contract was going to be signed, when everything is good to go, you know, the, let's say uh, even though the black applicant and the, and the, the lender, is whatever, the, they, the black person gets all five reference letters and they get everything stamped and they're good to go and it's like cool you completed the test good for you you completed this indiana jones level test that we put out there for you to get just a small business loan good for you nailed it good job you know you went through the maze um when they're signing the contact contract if that lender says the n-word that's when it becomes racial that's when it's all that's when it's the problem and uh, that's bullshit. And I can tell you exactly why. Because most racism is subtle. It's not in your face. It's not just, you know, that's not what it is. That does exist, for sure. Uh, but it's not the, the primary way that racism is put forward into our society at this point, right? And, and a very easy example for me to use for my personal life in this situation, um, instead of a hypothetical example, is like, is when I was coming up and going through trying to get into clubs and, you know, with, with particular bookers that would run shows at bars across the country and so on and so forth. Um, and I had, the, I had people say this to me a bunch you know people like that that used to book for a bunch of clubs uh, that that you, you know were were like a decently sized booking agency and I would come in and I would do these guest spots for them and I would do particularly well um, and they would tell me that I did particularly well but then they would be then these clubs and bookers would say well well they can't book me because you know their their audiences aren't particularly accustomed to someone like me or 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 they wouldn't really understand um someone like me right which is a very very subtle way of 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 going around uh saying something really racist which is uh hey a lot of people are going to blame you for uh uh for 9-11 and uh and use a racial slur against you. And uh, that's why we're not going to book you because because 9-11 and racial slurs, you know, like that that level of racism is very, very subtle. It's not something that is going to be seen um, every day. The way they do it is a little different, you know. So because that racism is subtle, you have to look at every step. If a white person only has to for come up with one letter of recommendation, um, but a black person has to come up with five, that's racist. It's not calling them a slur. It's these subtle ways that these things are done that really need to be paid attention to, and that's what that's what the courts are not doing. That's that's what Neil Gorsuch is against, and it really that should be the reformation that we should be looking for in terms of this. Um, now, there was also the DOJ, uh, Trump's Department of Justice, uh, that was looking for a motivation factor. That's what they were looking for, right? 
and looking for a motivation factor. And, and if we remember from last week, we did cover how the Department of Justice is pretty much putting a moratorium on habeas corpus. So if this case would not have been determined and pushed through and, and you know, been a victory for Comcast or anything, I think we would have probably seen this thing uh, be put into put into limbo, right? But but and it would have left Comcast to be in limbo, and that's a gray area. And for an all white company, you know, with that pristine rule of standard, oof, that's a tough spot to be in. It's a little speck of dirt on that pristine, isn't it? So, what was what was Comcast's real reason for not letting Byron Allen's channels on their platform? We don't know. I mean, part of it was also probably the price tag. The twenty billion is a big, big amount to be suing for. Um, but, but you know, his television network is available on Verizon, Directv, RCN, Sudden Link. All of these channels carry them, but Comcast doesn't. So, what is what is different about their standards? And we're not talking about that. And until, I mean, that, I mean, that's the way that the law works, is they don't have to prove that. They just didn't have to prove that. They didn't have to prove their level of standards. But Byron Allen had to prove what they did was racist, and they said, no, it's not, because they didn't say the N-word during the, during the proceedings, so it's not, you know, but they did... But they did deny black-owned businesses. They do take off urban channels off their network, but that's fine. This is a huge, huge mistake, I think. Um, and this is, I mean, here, here's the other thing that kind of leads it down to, to a class struggle, too, is Byron Allen, Byron Allen is a rich person. But he's a black rich person. So uh, when he goes up against other members of the elites, let's add the racial component to it. And that way we'll, we'll once again ignite the class war through the, through the, through the racial element. None of it's right. None of it's the. None of it's morally the, uh, the correct thing to do. Uh, but this this ruling is is total bullshit. It's total bullshit. So. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and share, and make sure that you are subscribed to uh, get alerts whenever I'm dropping new videos. I'm putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day. Uh, during the the old the old pandemic situation that, that we're all that we're all in together uh, so make sure that you guys are um, you know like share subscribe make sure that you guys are getting notifications um, and uh, and and keep up to date with all this stuff um, uh, what else did I, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to let you guys know about I normally would but right now uh, they are all on hiatus so um, the best way to to help is with the with the sharing and making sure that you're subscribed and stuff. But uh, if you have the means to and you can donate, uh, you can donate over at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member, uh, whatever you are able to do. But it is, it is absolutely uh, not mandatory. It is a uh, extra sense of appreciation uh, for all the content that will be coming out. All of my content will be available uh, for free for you guys to view and enjoy. Uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other. Make sure you're being good to each other. And uh, till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.